This morning we are going on a tour with Suchi Toto Adventure Outfitters and we're going to do a little bit of a hike in the mountains but this hike and this day out is a little bit different so stay tuned and you'll see why. <music> So after about a 25 minute ride from Suchitoto, we have arrived and we are in the jungle. We're in a, we're in a park and this is our guide for the day. Hi guys, my name is Josue. I work for Suchitoto Adventure Outfitters and it's a lovely day. So we're going to have a good day. Yes. Yes, we are. As you arrive in the park, there's a little seating area at the front just next to where you park the van and we were uh, given the opportunity to meet Don Rafael. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. <laughs> Rafael. 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 Chris. Chris. Okay. Which was fascinating. He told us about his childhood growing up right at the beginning of the Troubles and how he was part of the um, guerrilla force that fought against the government of that time and um, how he went all the way up to when they sat down, signed the peace treaty and negotiated um, a pact to give the people peace and um, it was absolutely fascinating. I would totally recommend coming, you get the opportunity to ask questions um, and it was a really interesting insight into um, his side of the events. So yeah, fascinating. So after that wonderful discussion, we are now starting our walk through this beautiful forest land and we're super excited to see what we can find. Before we actually begin, there are some things that you need to know about this forest. There are insects, there might be some spiders or snakes. They, usually they are scared of humans, so they might go away. But for that reason, I'll be in front. Very bouncy bridge. <laughs> so back in the day, between the 16 and 1800s, indigo was indeed the biggest export here in El Salvador. And behind us, we actually have an old indigo production area and uh, there's different areas where they would cut the plant they would have to soak it they would ferment it they would have to oxygenate it and then try and dry it and turn it into a powder but in the 1800s um, they actually in Europe apparently in Germany they developed a synthetic indigo um, product and therefore the indigo trade which was the biggest export here in El Salvador actually dried up and uh, coffee overtook them. So coffee is still the biggest export here in El Salvador. So back in the day, this area that we are standing on now was actually used as a bit of a rest stop for uh, when the, in the farming days. However, during the days of the, um, the war here in El Salvador, it was actually a strategic viewing point because you could see, if they cut some of the trees, you could see in both directions. But there's also, this is where they had one of the old trenches that you can see here that was used during the, uh, during the fighting. Very interesting information um, we're picking up as we go around and uh, definitely one that gets the, the imagination going. So it's hard to imagine um, 20, 30 years ago that this area here was a guerrilla stronghold in the mountains here. 
just outside of Chinquera. And uh, yeah, really, really interesting, interesting walk. Fighting in this heat in this jungle must have been absolutely terrible because I am sweating already and we've only been walking for about 20 minutes. So we've arrived at the kitchen and it's called a Vietnamese kitchen because the design is from the Vietnam War. And what the gorillas would have done is they would have lit a fire here and the smoke, there's a tunnel that's been buried through the hills here behind us for about 100 meters just under the surface. So the smoke is drawn through the tunnel and comes out in another area of the jungle. So if they were bombed or attacked, then they would go to the smoke and be safe. Absolutely genius, genius idea. And uh, one that's very hard to find if you follow the smoke. So I've had to take my glasses off because they are steaming up and I'm having trouble seeing where I'm walking. <laughs> so yeah, you do generate quite a lot of heat walking through the humid jungle, but it's really beautiful and so green. Um, the rainy season is soon to start and it's definitely making everything look a lot more lush. So for all the girls and boys that I used to work with, if you think conditions are bad there, have a look at this. This would have been your operating table. You would have put your trays and instruments here. And then there's a little hook at the end here for the IV. And there would have been a sheet over the top for rainy days or to stop leaves and things dropping onto your patient. What conditions were they to have been living in? It must have been incredibly difficult times. We can only even try and imagine. Armadillos are quite common here in El Salvador. I've never seen one yet. Uh, maybe we'll get lucky. Um, but you can see holes in the ground where they've been digging for food this morning. So uh, they're definitely around. We've come up to this beautiful, beautiful viewing point mm. with the most breathtaking views over the lake. And you can see the village Jinquera uh, below us here. Absolutely breathtaking views. So Jose, our guide, was just explaining, he's just handed us a leaf and asked us to guess what the plant is. And I thought it smelled a bit like lemon, a bit citrusy, but it's actually ginger, and there's ginger growing here in the forest. Oh, and there's a little, there's a little bit as proof, a little fresh bit of ginger. So as part of the tour, after all the hiking through the jungle, you get to come to this lovely waterfall and pool that you can see behind me. And if you want to jump in and take a dip, you get the time to do so. Personally, I'm already wet enough. I don't need to get any more wet yet because it's been super hot. Found a friend. Beautiful dog. With an itch. With an itch. Got a dog with an itch. <laughs> So as part of the tour, they also give you water, which in this heat is well deserved. Back in the town of Sinquera, we have the opportunity to um, see the town itself. Obviously we've seen the forest and where the gorillas would have camped out and hid out. And this is the town area and there's a monument to remember those dark times. They've actually um, put up 
a piece of the helicopter which was actually the sixth helicopter that the guerrillas had shot down and also you can see some of the guns that have been um, attached to the railings around this monument. It's here to remind everybody of the dark times and um, hopefully looking towards the future of never returning to those bad days. Uh, there are beautiful artistry and painting all the way round and murals. Um, showing some of the um, people, the prominent people that would have been involved in it and also just some of the local people and what, what they would have been wearing. What's really nice as well is one of the murals behind me, there are doves to um, show the symbol of peace and just next to the doves there is um, a picture of a man. He has a sickle in one hand and a book in the other to show that these are educated people, these are farming people and they were all affected. Um, somehow somebody is connected to it and it's really important to show the positive and the continuation and the future of El Salvador. Um, everybody's so lovely, they've obviously been through some incredibly difficult times, um, but the people have just been absolutely fabulous, really welcoming. We've had a fabulous guy today who's shown us around and we've, we've really enjoyed El Salvador and we would thoroughly recommend people to come on this tour and just hear um, one side of the other side of the story.